Dear listener, you are welcome once more to the talk on the nine levels of prayer or the nine levels of perfection. If you have been following us all this while, you would have been listening to the various talks on level one, two, three, and four, which are classified by the doctors of the church as ascetical levels of prayer. And thereafter, we did the talk on the dark night of the soul, the difficulty that the soul encounters in preparation for its transition to the fifth level of perfection. So today we'll be looking at the fifth level, which is infused contemplation. It is the first level requiring God's consent for the soul to achieve this level of prayer. The first four levels, we said these are levels the soul can achieve on its own, of course, with the aid of ordinary grace. Uh, but in order, and they are called the ascetical levels. So, but in order uh, for the soul to not get to the mystical levels of prayer, it goes through the dark night. And then God is the one, it is called mystical level because the soul cannot make this move. I said, God desires and facilitates it. So he is the one that directs souls from level five up till the ninth level of perfection. And that's why it's called the mystical levels of prayer. And so level five, the infused contemplation, is the first level requiring God's um, consent. Now let's begin by asking what is contemplation? Contemplation is the union of the soul and the senses to evaluate matters of wisdom. Contemplation is the union of the soul and the senses to evaluate matters of wisdom. Seeing this in the direction of prayer, contemplation is the prayer of the soul through the direction of the senses. When a soul attains this level, it has reached the highest level of spiritual reasoning. At this point, the individual is able to understand spiritual lessons like the Gospels, the writing of the saints, uh, mysteries unfolded to that person. Now, what does infused contemplation mean? As God wishes to lead a soul more completely, he will introduce to your thoughts some heavenly idea, a special grace, or a unique understanding. And this special help from heaven is your spiritual progress. It is called infused contemplation. Among the authors, several authors who have written about this, um, we always reference St. Teresa of Avila, a, a doctor of the church. There are others, but St. Teresa of Avila um, for us remain um, a, 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 a veritable reference. And then we have St. John of the Cross. Here, heaven opens new doors to the understanding of life, of death, of heaven, and of God. It, it takes a while for this to occur, uh, but this is just the beginning um, of the theological, the mystical, theological, uh, spiritual development of the individual. We must caution that it demands patience. Uh, it's not something that happens so quickly. It is not a prayer to get something, you know, material. It is the spiritual development of our souls. It takes years, but God expects us to try. And it's a call to higher levels of holiness and virtue. Too many are in a hurry. Life is busy. People want things quickly. You ask for something today, you want it yesterday. If you think that way, um, I'm afraid these lessons will not make much meaning to you. The process takes time. It is your soul that benefits, not your body. It is also an individual process. It is not family. It is not communion. It is not group prayer. The soul must learn to withdraw from the crowd from time to time in order to be with God alone. When you read through the scriptures from time to time, um, sometimes after speaking to the multitude, Jesus withdraws sometimes to the mountain in order to be with God alone. So, this is how it goes. You are alone in this effort. You alone must meet God uh, with, you know, to engage in this spiritual development. He waits for you. And um, we said it is the prayer itself the, the, is the first level requiring heaven's consent. 
uh, it's an activity in a new range of prayer. So it's known as mystical theology. Therefore, God must intervene to enable you to facilitate your transition to this level. In other words, he must agree that the person is ready for this level and desire the person to engage in this level of love. The level itself demands a great love and a desire for holiness on the part of the person. It cannot be rushed or imagined or even wished for by a person. It is a God-given gift. Why is it a God-given gift? Because it demands a total surrender of self to God and to his providential care. When we speak about providential care, it is important to understand that it means God providing. Um, your effort does very little or nothing in this situation. It is God who is absolutely in control. The Blessed Mother um, was greatly known for this. She could spend hours on her knees in prayer. She totally abandoned herself to the love of God. In addition, this level of prayer demands the infusion of the soul with special graces by the Holy Ghost. Remember the title of this level is Infused Contemplation. Infusion is there. An infusion of grace by God. He will give the soul of the person wisdom during this infusion, knowledge, piety, and trust to uphold the wisdom found in this level of prayer. He will help the person understand new ideas of God's love desire to grow holy and virtuous in piety and trust that God's care will be given. There are even greater gifts given to encourage the soul uh, rise to the next level during this period. But, you know, we begin small and encourage progress. Remember we said it, it involves, it could involve infusion of a unique understanding. Now, if you examine the life of many doctors of the church, many of the things they wrote about couldn't have taken place without this infusion of unique understanding, a special heavenly grace, special heavenly idea by God into the person. The time spent in this level of prayer demands quiet. It demands an outpouring of love and trust. It is not a, a one occasion experience, but a person grows in this experience spiritually but slowly. Having once experienced it, the person wants more, but does not always get more right away. So the person retreats back to vocal prayer, which is level one, or meditation, level two, or affective prayer, level three, which we call the level of falling in love with God, or even level four, the prayer of simplicity. Yes, that's all right. It is the proper thing to do. You cannot force this level, no. Do you always understand exactly what is happening? It is God who makes all the decisions. Another of the gifts given and tested very well during this level of prayer is faith. Faith is important due to the complex degree of love sought from the person and given by God. In order to abandon oneself to God, a great amount of faith is needed. Faith that God will provide spiritually. Faith that God is truly present with you. And faith that his word is correct, is right, worthy, honest, and true. That is faith. Some people try to force this level, but they do not love enough. They do not trust enough. They want to maintain their own will. If this level of prayer is to be achieved, a person must truly abandon self to God. One of the examples that can be given in this situation Picture a man, a father, whose son is standing on the top of a 25-story building. The father is on the ground and he says to the son, jump, I will, I will you know, bear you in my hands, I will catch you. And the son wants to jump, he trusts the father, but he's a bit afraid. What if the father is unable to catch him? What if he jumps and misses? And this is why we say, for this total self-abandonment to take place, the person must have faith and complete trust in God. Faith and love must be, must be constant just as hope and trust must remain constant. The kind of experiences associated with this level of prayer are not showy or seen by others. There is no special behavior observed by others. A person sits quietly, 
and appears lost in his or her thoughts. I say, he sits quietly, he becomes absorbed in God. Now, for infused contemplation to take place very well, it is important that the person is at rest, and that is why um, the sitting is important. It may begin while kneeling, while you're praying. It could be, it could be best, you know, to be rested. Now, um, for a person, if a person has achieved this level of prayer you will not really be able to know. It is just between this person and God. And so, as in all the levels, it is best not to talk to anybody else about your spiritual development, except perhaps to a spiritual director or a confessor um, whom you have spoken to before for spiritual direction. It is obvious that this level of prayer is a spiritual journey in which the person gives him or herself to the interior life. We are now talking about contemplatives. Of course, it will be easier accomplished in a contemplative life. Uh, but many of the laity have been able also to achieve this goal. Uh, so we are all encouraged to make uh, the effort. When we speak about contemplative life, you may have uh, heard of, you know, you know about the religious people in monasteries, hermits, and so on. Uh, these people are mostly contemplatives. And uh, it is far easier for them because the condition around them, silence, solitude, prayer, and so on, uh, tend to facilitate, and even the type of um, programs they undergo daily tends to facilitate uh, contemplative uh, prayer. And for the rest of the laity who are busy work need to be done, cars to drive, music and all that. Yes, it is still possible if we make our time to withdraw, as I said earlier, from the crowd. Some days are, 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 are so filled with activity. So you wonder, can I find time for quiet? But you are the one who put the busy schedule upon yourself. And therefore, you should make sufficient changes to permit quiet time to enable this prayer to, come, to occur. You can make this happen if you wish. You take some time, prepare your mind before you go into prayer. Jesus advised a mystic, do not leap from talk in right into prayer. You are just busy discussing what the things in a noisy atmosphere. You move directly from there into prayer. He says, take a little time to become quiet interiorly. Calm down, sit a minute, think about the fact that you are going to pray and then pray. Some people call this a time of adjustment. Yes, it is an adjustment in mind and heart and a separation mentally from other life's tasks. This rest period need not be long, but it should take place as few people can adjust so quickly. Try it and you will pray more effectively. So we see that in the life of the saints, many of them um, some, a lot of them were contemplatives. And many of them withdrew from their daily activities to give themselves to the interior life. When you come to this level, you are asked, you ask, what is it like? What should I do in order to attain this level? There are so few who have reached to this level or achieved a higher level, especially among the laity. So few laity know what prayer is. And what we have been taught is how to grow spiritually. It is something that we must make our time for. And um, remember that beyond this, we will be transiting to the sixth level of prayer. Again, this will not be possible until God himself wills that this soul is ready. These things take time, they take years, and it is God who facilitates it. It is important for you to find a place to pray. Some of the saints chose places far away from the church. Some even created a quiet place within the bush, the forest, only sounds of birds. Had there. So they will be totally alone with God. If you read the life of the saints, you will uncover their hiding places. Um, this is fine if you can feel secure. But at first, it is better, it 
it is recommended that we should go to the church, be in front of the blessed sacrament, especially these days where you have so many chapels dedicated, especially um, for prayer before the blessed sacrament or before the tabernacle. Even if people are in the church or in the room, you can still be alone with God mentally. And that means you talk, you don't talk, you're just quiet. You can still talk to each other. And I, you know, I mean, between you and God, you can talk to each other. And then He gives you the individual love you desire and you give Him. You will need to mentally separate yourself from those around you. You cannot do justice to this type of prayer. If you worry about life's task, look around, talk to others, get distracted. An objective is not even to see or know who is next to you. If done, then you are fully concentrating on God and His loving presence. And He too on you. Every day, sit down somewhere and think about God. It may not be a formal meditation. It may not be planned. But after some rest and thinking about God in this way, you will be refreshed, you become reinvigorated and have more vigor, like a good exercise for the physical body. Now we're talking about spiritual exercise. Such an activity, uh, such a practice puts you in a good mood to pray and it is very healthy for the soul. After being purified with the dark night of the senses, which was the stage of a special purgation of the soul before transiting to this fifth level, and also with the intensity of God's presence and grace increasing in us through the first four levels of prayer, God advances us to this fifth level known as infused contemplation. At this level, he becomes increasingly active while we become passive. Please take note of this. God becomes increasingly active in the soul while we become passive. At this last level, the last level was the highest level we could reach through our own efforts as we have mentioned earlier. It is impossible to achieve this fifth level without divine intervention. We have also said this before. It is totally beyond our control. Our duty here is to cooperate with God. With this special work of the Holy Ghost, our vocal prayer, meditation, affective prayer, and prayer of simplicity diminishes. In this level, individuals to various degrees are infused with God's supernatural knowledge, wisdom, understanding, insight, love, joy, strength, and so many others. He gives to the soul a deep intellectual and or experimental taste of his presence, and even gifts which cannot yet be depicted so clearly or distinctively. According to Father Jordan Norman, there are 12 characteristics of infused contemplation. Number one, he says, it is an unmistakable experience of God's presence, experimentally and intellectually. Some authors will say, felt presence of God. A person can even describe to you this felt presence, perhaps a warm glow, perhaps some certain assurance that God is present in the person's soul. Number two, this is also an invasion of the soul by the supernatural as God inundates the soul with supernatural life. At least one author uh, calls this level, just like level 8, a kind of disvergining of the heart or of the soul. This one is disvergining of the soul. Uh, God invades. You know, it doesn't need your permission anymore. It just invades. So, uh, Father Jordan Norman says it's, an, it's also an invasion of the soul by the supernatural as God inundates the soul with supernatural life. Number three, the experience will not last a second longer than is desired by the Holy Ghost who causes it with the operations of his gift. As soon as God's will is accomplished, these things can take months, years, and so on. Once he has accomplished what he desires within this period, this experience will not last a second longer. Number four, the soul cannot contemplate whenever it wants. No, you were free between levels one and four. You could do what you want and how you wanted it. But here, you can only contemplate when God desires and the measure and degree to which he so desires. Number five, the experimental knowledge of God enjoyed is not clear and distinct, 
but obscure and even baffled. Not very clear. Yet we have authors who have written about them to explain to us. Number six. During this mystical prayer, it is impossible for the soul to doubt about God's very presence and activity with it. Although the soul may doubt about this afterwards, but at this moment, the soul has absolute certainty that God is present in this other soul. Number seven. The soul also enjoys a certain moral certitude of being in a state of grace. Yet, this certitude is far superior to that possessed by ordinary Christians in their ascetical state. Remember, when we were doing the dark night of the soul, we referenced St. John of the Cross who talked about confirmation in grace. Confirmation in grace. You know, yet St. Teresa of Avila warns that as long as we are in this life, we should always be careful about sin. Number eight. This mystical experience is indescribable as such beyond the expression of human languages. Number nine, although this mystical union with God may last for a long time, sometimes it is so brief as if it is nothing more than a divine touch. It also admits of very variations and fluctuations in intensity. Number ten, when mystical contemplation is very intense, the body may react visibly. If you are near that person, you will observe a few things. The eyes become clouded and dull. The organism is weak and intermittent with an occasional deep breathing as if trying to absorb the necessary quantity of air. The limbs are partly paralyzed. The heat of the body decreases, especially in the extremities. Note that, as Father Jordan Norman cautions, there could be other experiences um, encountered by other people. Number 11. This prayer may be so intense that it results in an aesthetic trance. Uh, because of the absorption in God, it is often difficult and even impossible for a mystic to give attention to any other prayer or activity uh, during this prayer. You note the aesthetic trance. The person may be in ecstasy, may fall into a trance and the mystical experience could occur. But not all people at this level of prayer um, um, get into ecstasy or trance. Number 12, a surest sign of true contemplation is that the soul often leaves this prayer with a great impulse towards a virtuous life. The person becomes more virtuous. Sometimes, and this is very important, sometimes the soul may be given a degree of progress in a certain virtue which has been impossible to attain before despite great efforts. You know, the person may have some habits, sinful habits or vices they are trying to conquer. In this situation, special graces may be given and the person overcomes it so easily. However, this prayer does not instantaneously bring us to perfection. Perfection will come at the ninth level of prayer. Remember we were talking and discussing level 5. Going further, Father Jordan Norman, who is a professor, further counsels. He gives three counsels which we need to be aware of. He says, number one, we should not cease discussing meditation, that's level two, until we clearly perceive the call to a higher level of prayer. As St. Teresa of Avila wants, when the soul is not sure, he should not try to remain passive and inactive as if in contemplation. Such self-direction or pride will produce only empty aridity and restlessness which goes nowhere. Number two, we should immediately terminate all discursive prayer as soon as we feel the impulse of grace towards infused contemplation. Since this is God's activity, it will be most imprudent for a spiritual director to command a particular soul to discontinue mystical prayer in order to return to ordinary prayer. And then number three, people so graced should give themselves completely to the interior life and the practice of the virtues. Yeah, they should also break with all attachment that still keep them in unholy or ungodly bondage. We're talking about sin here. Yeah, any sinful habit should be done away with. Um, the interior life, we've talked about it, contemplation, those who are called to monastic life or to the head to hermitage. 
then, even among the laity, they, they can, this can still be uh, achieved. Uh, to round up, remember what we said before, that contemplation is the union of the soul and the senses to evaluate matters of wisdom. And that in the line of prayer, it means the prayer of the soul through the direction of the senses. And that through infused contemplation, uh, God who directs all things from this level infuses into the soul a special grace, a unique understanding, a heavenly idea, and so on. Some are called to establish a new order. Some are called to special teaching. Some are called to special works of charity, like you know, taking care of the poor, the sick, the widows, and, and so on. So these are all, some of the things that are involved in this level. But you must make out time daily to be with God alone, to reflect, to meditate, to St. Gregory Palamas, he says the end of prayer is to be snatched away to God. We hope you have been able to uh, gain some useful hints about this first, uh, it's the fifth level of the nine levels of perfection, but then it's also the first level of the mystical, theological levels. Uh, next week, we'll be taking you further to the sixth level, and that is the prayer of quiet. For, have, for those listening to us, may God bless you abundantly to the intercession of all his saints, especially our Holy Mother, uh, the Blessed Virgin Mary. Bless you especially with the grace to be able to achieve these levels of prayer because as St. Paul will say, we are all called to be saints. All those things you read about in books about the saints, they are not uh, museums, they are not for the archives. We are also called to achieve those levels, to grow holy, to overcome our sins and vices, and to be used as special instruments of God to renew the face of the earth. Thank you.